Hi guys, here are your notes for 2.6 rational functions day 2. So yesterday we were graphing rational functions and we were looking at horizontal asymptotes and there were three scenarios with horizontal asymptotes and they all compared the degree. So if the degree of the numerator was smaller than the degree of the denominator then you had the horizontal asymptote y equals 0. So degree numerator, whoop, that's a weird n, was less than the degree of the denominator. That was the horizontal asymptote y equals 0. If you had the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, then that was the equation y equals a over b, and that was the leading coefficients of your polynomials. And the third scenario was when the degree of the numerator was greater than the degree of the denominator. And then that's when you don't actually have a horizontal asymptote, so no horizontal asymptote. And what you have instead is called an oblique or a slant asymptote. Um, so the way that you find the asymptote, if you read through this, says the asymptote is found by dividing the polynomials using long division or synthetic division, dividing not, depending on what you're dividing by, and looking at the quotient without the remainder. So let's go ahead and do an example. So here's your polynomial. There is a typo, so let's fix it. It should say x squared plus 2x minus 8. Otherwise, it's not really factorable. So our first step is to factor it. So I have x plus 1 on the bottom. Um, two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to 2 are positive 4 and negative 2. Um, so just like yesterday, finding the x-intercepts, the x-intercepts are the zeros of the numerator. So I have 1 at 4, 0. That's not right. Negative 4, 0. negative 4, 0, and my other one is at 2, 0. So I'm going to go ahead and plot those two points, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. There are my x-intercepts. Your vertical asymptotes come from the zeros of the denominator. So I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. So I can go ahead and graph that, x equals negative 1, is this line over here. My y-intercept comes in from plugging in 0. So I'm going to plug in 0 into either my original function or my factored form. So I have 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 8 over 0 plus 1. And that gives you negative 8. So my y-intercept is 0, negative 8. So let's plot that. Here's your y-intercept. Now, if you look at your degrees, because that's how you figure out your horizontal asymptote, let's look at the original. My degree over here is 2, and my degree down here is 1, because you're looking at your highest exponent. So if you'll notice, the degree on top is bigger than the degree on the bottom. That means you do not have any horizontal asymptotes. Instead, you will have an oblique asymptote, and that's what the OA stands for. So if you have a horizontal asymptote, you won't have an oblique. And if you don't have a horizontal asymptote, then chances are you will have an oblique asymptote. Um, holes we talked about yesterday. Holes come from factors that canceled. None of those canceled, so we don't have any holes either. And now we just need to find the oblique asymptote. So you can do that one of two ways. You can do long division or synthetic division, depending on what you're dividing by. This one you can do both because you're dividing by x plus 1, so I'm going to show you both. So I have x plus 1, and I'm going to divide into x squared plus 2x minus 8. Now this one you can do both because you're dividing by x plus a number or x minus a number. If you were dividing by like an x squared or an x cubed, that forces you to do long division. So I'm going to look at this first term. I'm going to ask myself what times x gives you x squared. That's x. I'm going to multiply x times x plus 1, that's x squared plus 1x. Draw the line, change the signs. Um, so that gives me 
x minus 8, because you're bringing down the next term. What times x gives you x? That's 1. Multiplying x plus 1 times 1. Draw the line, change the signs. Um, so your remainder for this is negative 8. Just kidding, that's most definitely negative 9. Um, so for your oblique asymptote, your oblique asymptote is the quotient without the remainder. So it's just this. And it is a line, so make sure you write it as a y equals, don't forget your y equals, so that's y equals x plus 1. And I'll also show you synthetic division if you wanted to do it that way as well. Since I'm dividing by x plus 1, I'm going to put negative 1 in the box, listing out my coefficients, so that's 1, 2, negative 8. 1 goes straight down, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Combine, multiply, and combine. So since I started with an x squared, that means this is going to start with an x, so that leaves me with x plus 1. Again, you get the same thing but it does depend on what you're dividing by. So now I need to actually graph the oblique asymptote. So your oblique asymptote is a slant asymptote. That's why they're called um, slant asymptotes in your textbook. So it's going to be a diagonal line. So if we look at what we have in the blue, we need to identify the slope and the y-intercept. Your slope is 1. Your y-intercept is also 1. So that means I'm going to start at 1. Uh, what color was that? Let's make that blue. I'm going to start at 1, and then I'm going to go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, and then you have your diagonal line. And this I'm still making dashed because it's an asymptote, and all asymptotes are dashed. Okay, now to actually sketch the graph, um, you can use the calculator, so type in your original function. Don't forget about alpha y equals... That'll help you create that fraction bar. And if you look at the graph on your calculator, it should look something like this. So your graphs do look a little different today because we now have slant asymptotes or oblique asymptotes instead of horizontal asymptotes. All right, so on your notes, there is an example too, but I want you to cross them off. Um, so that means on your homework assignment, I want you to cross off the problems that go with that. Um, so it's the very last problem. So I think on your homework assignment, you only have four questions. All right, I hope the video makes sense. If it doesn't, you can watch it again. And I apologize for not being at school today. Hope you all have a great weekend.